follow up, submit progress report, we get checklists, and know what's going on, what's not going on. And so we are very happy that we work with Moroccan, we work with the Saudis. So to them we say thank you very much.
Nations coordinator to Liberia making remarks here at the occasion. Well, folks, if you're just joining us, we are watching Screen TV live from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Monrovia, where the ministry is dedicating its refurbished apartment and offices today. And President George Weir will cut the ribbon of the facility here. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador Yali Augustine Gen is uh, the Ambassador Extraordinary Planning Potentiary of the Republic of Cameroon. Sorry for the sound because the microphone here and there's a technical problem. We hope to hear Ambassador Kimia and President We Lauri. The ambassador of Cameroon making official remarks here is the doing of the diplomatic call. of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank 
different zombie approaches is regulate and rationalize the improvised password management and other passwords, of course, have been attempted. As you all know, fake and unreserved ownership of the door opening record, the open system of the international information powers, causes tremendous harm we know that a lot of work remains to be accomplished. So too, a little more work remains to be done in streamlining the place and status of Nigeria's honorary consuls. We can see that the observance of the patient which has been greatly reduced and made more efficient by the Of course, I must end by most sincerely thanking Mr. Chairman. For his constant availability to all diplomats in this country. Nigeria is unique in the manner in which most of its very senior officials and politicians make themselves available to foreign diplomats and travelers. Those who have traveled around the world know that we must not take this open door policy for granted. Dear Minister, you were an example in this respect. And so I thank you again for our collective effort. As you leave office, so please exit this place with pride, knowing that only those who do not act never make this step. I am sure we have a lot of items to ask of you because of our own diplomatic missteps during this year. And if you may, make this step towards some of us and some of us in the future, also added. Please transmit to His Excellency President George Manewea, who for six years restored on measured trust to you our greetings and our internal terms for the smooth relations that we permitted us to have with him. Also transmit our respect and gratitude for his maturity, patriotism, and application which have put Liberia higher up in the world to see. Because in May, the end of the 10th October and for the November elections, a time of great national peace, tranquility, and jubilation and reign for the world.
hope, the tenacity, the courage to conceive and move on. And it is not a hidden fact that uh, wherever you may be in the world, whether you are in a Western country or in Africa, such action on the part of the leader will not go down well. Every follow has taken. So it is no doubt I won't uh, shy away from stating that uh, he, our leader, has been and continued to be under uh, unimaginable pressure because of that global impact decision that he made, which has added value. So, brethren, uh, my family and, and I forever owe you a debt of gratitude for believing in me when no one believed in me. When there were doubts, you saw potential in me. And irrespective of the countless number of political motivated attempts to prevent me from being in the position I'm in and even going to the extent of manufacturing lies and all sorts of things against me. You stood as a man of humanity knowing that we have the potential to serve you. So this is who you are bringing out Daily potential and daily videos. So we are grateful to have such an individual and such a human that we associate with you. And my story, my testimony that I share here is a testimony of commonality to so countless number of questions out there on the video screen. I will be there. So, President, I know you have a text here, but please uh, bear me. Very last official function of the UN, of the Liberal Marine Corps, and the RSC here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. All I was saying here about me and the work here, Mr. President, is not to my credit, it's to you, it's to your credit. And I want to salute you for, uh, for that. I'd like for you, with the exception of the President and the last President, I'd like to have you as you and the rest of the perception of the president, to give the president a standing position about this standing up in his honor.
happen than have happened now. We are very happy knowing what we have done for the short time, a little over three when a little over three years as Minister of Foreign Affairs. I have nothing to regret about exiting the stage. Nothing absolutely. Overwhelmingly pleased that we serve and that uh, we live in an indelible uh, brain. Even people with political lenses uh, will not avoid the reality of what we've done. But more than that, so yes, so that with the third elevator will be moving straight into the minister's office, you know, as the minister. Be in line with And these elevators, Mr. President, even when current goes, these elevators will keep current for 45 minutes. So even if you get in it and you go to the region to the next position, there's no need, uh, you know, to panic. And these elevators all three are installed. Imagine if they went to three elevators and installed, and you get in current goes, relax. To reach you to your destination, whether you went up or coming down, as they were custom made in Italy. You know, custom made in Italy. And I take uh, responsibility for the delay in arrival, Mr. President, because at the time the manufacturer, the one for the, the minister's office, the design to open only one way, only the minister's office. But I wanted it to open from both sides. So they have to redesign. So that had impact on it coming and arriving at this time. But I don't regret the delay because then that is something uh, that we don't compromise, you know, as it is following your uh, footprint. It's one of the lessons, you know, in uh, the Kingdom uh, Institute. <laughs> So we plead, but there's a president more than the renovation. What pieces me the most? I'm very pleased with the renovation, Mr. President, and you will see your whole office, you know, as it is. And I leave it to the, to the rest after seeing the tell the story. But I am very pleased beyond the renovation with the policy framework, Mr. President, because my colleagues, and what have you, even when you approve the honorary council replies declaration is something that will receive commendations for that because the issue of honorary council is around the world. I've had a lot of testimonies from police regarding what it was. But because of the courage, because of the vision, today with the minimum for a lot of the uh, description on our councils we had around the world, as I speak to you, we got five. And it left with the new administration, <laughs> but reflecting the process as it is. So we got four that, that, that for maritime, and then one came as it is. But when we started that, it was not an easy thing. Mr. President, in the solar, if you will recall, when we terminated the services of the Honorary Council in Minnesota, it was a big issue. Our citizens in Minnesota, right, Mr. President, they were saying, people wanted, people said, they had a protest there. And they were all stopped. Some of the police, you know, the money, what is happening. And in line with the President's dream, Minnesota has the largest number of Liberian uh, community members. You know, and then even in the Midwest. So in line with the vision of the chief architect of Liberia foreign policy, we simply wanted to transform the honorary council, count the honorary council that came in so that to a career council, where the services that will be rendered to our Liberian there will almost be on par like a full flag. And so when people said we were protesting, I said, how can somebody protest that we want change from honorary council to a period council? You know, as it is, they like, you're giving somebody one dollar and you come and say, okay, you're paid, you have a pay ride, three dollars. That's 
and some other time, protesting for increasing my pay. So we knew it was all political, you know, and thankfully the kind of leader we have, you know, and, and he followed up. And Mr. President, I'm very much pleased to inform you that the Korea Council is now with the nation uh, for Minnesota has been approved by the State Department of the United States of America, Mr. President, as it is. And once that the fact that the State Department has approved all the terms with the building, the office, you know, to post the career consulate in the certain way. And we are thankful to you, Mr. President, that uh, the rent for that temporary in Minnesota has been paid for, Mr. President. And I'm further pleased to inform you that uh, in line with the regulation of the State Department, the last aspect was the starting for that diplomatic staff that to go there. And I'm pleased that pursuant to your approval that uh, these staff, including uh, the, the Consul General, you know, uh, for that uh, their visa are being approved uh, by the U.S. Embassy for them to take up assignment as it is. Sometimes people say, I'd like to speak to that. And I've been talking to a number of questions. Oh, the president is going out. Oh, they're sending people to the foreign service. And people even attaching all sorts of numbers to the foreign service as it is. But I was talking to my, to my, to my, to some of my colleagues, you know, as it, as it is. Even as I speak to you in this way, hopefully we're expecting those that are home at that end to have their books returning, you know, to us. So this has been a process. Just imagine when people were protesting in Minnesota. So it has been a process. But diplomacy is not something I guess over them. You know, it's, it's a field of integrity by itself, you know, as, as, as it is. And so it takes time. It's not an event. It's a process. So people that are leaving now, some people that are born, are people that have been present. As part of the reform, we have a mandatory uh, uh, training program that even the last set of ambassadors that were appointed had to go to the training program before taking up their assignments to the field. So people went through training, some as far as May last year, and they've gone through the training. Processing has been taking place. Uh, ambassadors know, diplomats know what they're sending you. The nomenclature may be different, you have to get a moving car, that's an amount that will have to resettle you and all of that. Please, so it's a whole process. And then by the time some of the processes went through elections, so those who had to go, some wanted to get their ballot. So you could not then uh, hold them back. And then, then the presidential vote ended in November, and from that time you uh, made it. But everything that is happening, is happening in line with the reform. Let me ask the members of the senior management team that are here. I know some are working. Members of the senior management team, please stand. Uh, please stand, the members of the senior management team of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who are here. Mr. President, the senior ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President, from the day you are putting the peace out of you are appointed in September 29, 2020. I assume office took office officially October 6, 2020. And from that point up to today, the way we ran the ministry, Ambassador Wallace, Ambassador Kamara, Ambassador Kamara has been in the Senate. Uh, please stand. He's also worked the border for 40 years plus. He has been in the Senate administration for a long time. We can imagine that same day without friends. These people and myself, we meet every week as soon as members of the senior management. And we look at issues in the ministry. That's how, Mr. President, I ran this ministry since September uh, 29, 2020, the present. Every week we meet senior management. And when we take decisions, then as minister, I go to execute. But when you at the executing arm, it's your name that goes. So sometimes it's like I'm doing my own thing. 
But no, they are the one. And Mr. President, I know Ambassador Wallace, you, you stood up for this man again. Mr. President, Ambassador Wallace, who is ambassador to the President of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Wallace did not make one senior management team meeting. Not one senior management team meeting, Ambassador Wallace. Sometimes we will be in meetings. Yes, he came and he ran. And he sees Corin will go in the night and we will put our church light on to be able to do an ambassador. Well, thank you, please, as a seat. We will be in there. And when we finish in the darkness, we make our way in The country we are in, unfortunately, and to a large extent, the world, you will try to make things right. And our highlight is that because the world we in is a world of, uh, I wouldn't say what you call it, or what I How can we be okay if we're breaking cartels of people who are involved in passport deals? How will we be comfortable with that? So, since I came in this ministry, I am back on closing the black market in this ministry. And we've been doing just that. You know what I said. The revised passport regulations, we are very pleased with those. We respect that. In the passport regulations, we maintain the payment that was being made, for instance, the, the price for diplomatic passports. Liberia, Mr. President, is one of the few countries, if not the only country in the world, are people paying for diplomatic money? Yeah, they are. When you are appointed as a diplomat to the feet, or minister as it is, and they're giving you diplomatic money, you are not supposed to pay for it. I pray one of the people who are going to get out of the way and pay for your diplomatic money. If I had an end, when if you are returned, if the end of 10 years before, or while you are supposed to return the passport. But when you pay for it, it's like you own it. And you know you own it. But in a revised regulation, we take up, you know, steps in line with that to take it from individual to institutional level with respect to protecting and protecting. In a revised regulation, all of our passports, Liberian passports, are now six years, are valid for six years. All of the Nigerian passports are valid for six years, including the, the, the diplomatic passport for Liberia. Let me be quick to point out that Liberia is also one, uh, well, one of the few countries, you know, even in the South region, I think Ghana is pending it. So, we are, so what we've done through the reform question to the vision of the president, is to bring our Liberian passport regime, you know, in line with our police, you know, and take around the world. The foreign service money, we are also one of the few that our diplomats are in the field as it is, and they have to struggle on their own for some things. If you are sick, you got to think about putting it in your own pocket or out of your salary to go and pay for medical. You know, you have to except for countries, except for three nations in the U.S. You know that thing. We want to put you, look at the way this is happening in Ukraine and uh, in Europe. Look at the U.K. We have our U.K. ambassador, our ambassador to the U.K. Look at the pound. If you look at the pound to the to the to the UN, we pay the UN. So it's very, 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 very low. Thank you, please have it. So when you say US Dara and it changes the pound, you know where it is. So we don't get cost of living and justice. So the president has been his excellency has been very much concerned about that. Very much concerned about that. Yes, somebody will say what? Well, the, 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 the passport regulation is launching today, as Councillor Gray told you. It's up to 200 pages, you know, as it is. I think a little over 150 pages. 
something that will happen over there. And I'm talking of man, you know, to handle the foreign service. So it took years. It took years of revision. Years of revision. And we are revised in anticipation of making it better. Our destiny being in our favor to be able to move in terms of second term. But destiny is destiny, and we can't question destiny. So I'm saying that some people will know sometimes that the Lord is bringing at this time. Because it got completed, and you see, it says, Revise July. Revise July 2023 passport regulation. So it got that time, and we're waiting for approval. And when the president granted approval, we know during that time, campaign, electoral time, and all of that. So we could not launch it that time, but it should have been. And then the, the fourth edition of the Foreign Service Manual revised August 2023, you know, in the same thing. So in that manual now, it addresses all those things as, as, as it is. You know, giving the three different categories of embassy. And you know, category A, category B, category C. Because all of the missions that they know, they are into category. You know, as it is, the different. And what it is that qualifies want to be in a particular category. So all of that, you know, and uh, diplomatic staff rotation. In the foreign service, like in some countries, in Ghana and in Togo, when you serve, I think two children, you got to come back to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to serve before then you go out. That's what is happening with best practice in Bologna. So we've brought it, you know, to that level. Now, the new manual that the President is doing. If you go out and serve, after, you know, your two term, you can come back in the Foreign Ministry to come and serve. And then after you serve in the new Foreign Ministry, you can be redeployed. Ghana, Togo, this is what you know is happening. And then the time of rotation in a new manual is clear that from the beginning of your appointment, whether ambassador or any other position, in the appointment level, it must be stated how long you are going to serve in the field. If you are appointed, then you go right from the beginning. All of our colleagues who come here in the foreign service, they know. We saw an ambassador that came down two years, and the time that time is over, to prepare to go. So right from the beginning, you know, I'm going for this number of years. And in our manual, you can ask, you can only serve for a maximum of three years at a post in the manual that is being replaced. You can only serve for a maximum of three years at a post. There are countries among us that have served for two years. You know, for two years. I can tell you the last Indian ambassador, I was two years. The last US ambassador, I was two years. The last French ambassador, I was two years. You know, as it is. But we talk in the wisdom, you know, of the chief architect. You know, that, okay, the good for three years, we will serve, and after the two terms, I'm post, and after the two terms, we come. You know, as I'll oppose me if you are appointed to Ghana, you can serve there for not more than three years at Ghana. Post, then you have to come back. The diplomatic fee, we refer to it as a nomadic fee, like a nomad. You gotta always be ready to move. You know, you pick up, you appointed today, tomorrow get ready, then you can pick up your bed to go. We also address in a new manner when you are in call. They know when they recall you, you have to come to headquarters. You have to come to home office. For us, if you are recalled, you tell your recall letter, you put it on Facebook. Then you put it on issues, they recall me, they did that. And you got people who been there 9 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. What we want? No reform. The world we in is a world of reform. So I don't have any regret, no apology for the reform that we initiated.
associated we are very proud of him you know as a so when you are rico you come you know as it is so they are different 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 processes you go on your child and you worry how you pay your child school fees in the regulation is clear you are entitled to education allowance for three minor you know whether you pass it out or you are so these are the kind of things so the welfare of people in the field the president is 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 a human character of women i can say it and i know it so he has been concerned about these things and based on the amendment to be working so it's a president i didn't think i thought we were going to wrap up and not talking this no it's a president uh, so uh, my, my president you know my president and last day i want to thank all of the staff all of the staff of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the time that I served here in the ministry. You may not, and even the entire uh, senior management team, junior management team, I have all, I have their gratitude to all of you. You may not, some of you may not have appreciated the things that we did here. But forgive me for them that I did these things in the best interest of the country. And if I ever had an opportunity, opportunity, opportunity again, I will do the same thing and apologize to you for my way out because I'm doing it in the interest of the Republic of Liberia. When these ten people came as a president, even before the king, and I said that we will not pay any of those people. We will not assign them to any staff in the ministry. So many people, because I said it months before even the election, I will keep them for after election. If President Weah succeeds himself, his excellency, then the cars will be turned over to the administration. It didn't go down. But we wanted to make sure that the case, you know, as it is. And then there was news. They said that the vehicles at the foreign ministry, the ten vehicles, they may have been taken there and waited when the vehicles were parked at the passport area. You know, for front page, the other people will come and they took the vehicles there because when the vehicles parked under, you know, the grass, the uh, front the grass, and the South, South Korean ambassador was coming for a program to hand in the world. So we had to prepare, you know, for that. No. Can I ask or not, President Biya's administration will not take a peep out of this ministry. No, they then talk different things and talk about Can I ask or not, man. We will not take a peep. Everything will remain here, you know, and it is. That is why, uh, even the people that are starting to meet today, Monday morning, January 22nd, who will come and park ready? Because I'm not coming to the ministry on the 27th. You know, as Friday is my last official day here. From the program, I'm passing by the ministry. And the vehicles that were assigned to me will be here. And we're not going to thank them. Wave the office. Mr. President, where you want to see upstairs uh, in your office that you used to be at my office? I have not even sat in the seat there. Mr. Sawyer and her team, the one on the fourth floor behind me, they moved everything from my office and took it to the fourth floor to see if I could sit down there. And I told them my concern about the renovation is not about myself. I'm following your selfless nature, it's not about myself. I am preparing the way for my successor to come and take over. And I'm leaving the ministry of very happy. Minister of Foreign Affairs marks here at the program. So President George, we are flanked by the Vice President Joel Howard Taylor and also Foreign Minister. 
Ambassador D. Mazwe Sakimeya here at the program, dedicatory program of the refurbishment of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs facility. Agenda of every leader 
who takes the reins of leadership. Today, we dedicate this project, these projects unto you. We pray that they will serve as God in life. They will serve as an impetus and motivation for leaders who are coming on the scene even after this war. Let this project bring glory and honor to the day. Let it serve as a medium through which the quality of the livelihood of your people and especially those who serve in the foreign service will be enhanced. We thank you, Lord, that as this government is living in the Lord for prayers to be emulated by the next government has been laid today that it will be a motivation so that governments that will come they have nothing else but the interest of the nation and its people of all. We now dedicate this work to you for your glory and for your honor and for the furtherance of the work of the Republic of Liberia, both now and in the future. Thank you, Almighty God, for in Jesus' name, we declare this new project dedicated to you for the service of humanity. In Jesus' name, we declare it dedicated. Amen. God bless you. You may have that was the dedicatory prayer there. So for this, uh, you are in tune to Freedom TV now. Nazareth. 
This is the question of that of Sanesio Wu, who, that no success or achievement can come from the question of this. I have the prison honor to be here on the bigger grounds where I sat for not less than four years to perform the duties and the responsibility as president of the Republic of Nigeria. Due to an upgrade of the fire which devastated the executive national in 2006, this building served as a temporary seat of the government of Nigeria from 2006 to February 2022. Time officially relocated to the executive national. I want to use this occasion to officially thank the family of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for hosting the presidency of the Republic of Nigeria for that contracted period. Today, I am proud to be dedicating the newly renovated, refurbished area from the dedicated of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It's very pleasing to note that the projects we are dedicating here today were completely and absolutely at no cost to the government of Nigeria. They are the outcome of the direct initiative undertaken entirely by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Dean of the Cabinet in this time. In other words, these are self-help projects initiated by the true patriots and nationalists. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs family, especially Ambassador D. Master Sakuma Senior, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Dean of the Cabinet, deserve after congratulations and the largest applause for undertaking these lofty projects. Society where people prefer to take away from the people, the foreign minister of Kimania and his team are willingly giving to the people. It seems there is a legacy of the spirit of self initiative in this nation. With excellent skills in sourcing bilateral support and system, Ambassador Kimania reached out. I want the support of the Kingdom of Morocco and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, who graciously provided funding for the renovation and refurbishment of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs building and the construction of the farm parking lot. The combined support from these two friendly countries is a demonstration of their productive bilateral relations. We are built over these years. In terms of support, informing the government of the Kingdom of Morocco directly contracted and executed the renovation and reinforcement of the sixth floor. The stairs of all the floors, the sea, Cecil Dennis Auditorium, the Pula and Fuaki. The fitting of the exterior of the building and the construction of the new front part interior of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. For its part, the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia provided the funding to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for the renovation and refurbishment of the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth floor, as well as the basement of the ministry. This phase of the project is being directly overseen by the Ministry. The fact that there are no allegations of malpractice or corruption because the officials of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs are managing and disbursing the fund, having successfully completed the EPCC process means 
there are credible and trustworthy people among us. Thank you, Ambassador Kimana. I am proud to say that we have people of character and integrity here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The construction project was entirely contracted to and implemented by the Liberian Home Company, MDMC, headed by Mr. John Dibuti. We want to hear our Liberian Home Contractor for the job excellently done. The level of excellence in this project is an advancement of all of the Liberian Home Firm to perform for their country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the people of the Republic of Liberia, I name my own name. I officially dedicate a newly, a newly recommended Ministry of Foreign Affairs building project. And in this open manner, I want to thank and express gratitude appreciation of Marco and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for their generous support. The second day we shall give us the Ministry of Foreign Affairs a brand new and modern look. This project a laudable achievement and lots of the praise, recommendation, especially for the government that has often been criticized and abused labor trusted for corruption that we are dedicating a newly renovated and reformed building to be turned over to the incoming government, demonstrate our level of patriotism, love for our people, and our support for the small contribution in governance. It appears and correctly too. The Foreign Minister Kimanya and his team at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs understood President John F. Kennedy well when he said, Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Quote, if Liberia were persisting, the effort of government in a meaningful way at this, that we will develop rapidly. You do not have to build large dams or long bridges before the patriotic efforts are recognized. Do whatever little you can do to develop and modernize the world. You have done too much of age now to stay discounted at the level of undevelopment in which find ourselves. Let me, at this time, refer to various issues surrounding our personal and the foreign service of the country, which from time to time have attracted negative ties. This matter bring our attention and in an attempt to correct, continue and bring the Liberia's personal regime and foreign service on par the current conventional standard of best practices. A matter of permission to the Minister of Foreign Affairs for the revision of past guidelines and formulations of requisite revised regulation. Upon completion of this exercise, I approve the revised 2023 passport regulations and the full editions of the Foreign Service Manual of the Republic of Liberia. Revised August 2023, which I hereby officially launched. <laughs> I want to congratulate Foreign Minister Kimana and his team and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for their excellent work. I'm proud of you. Foreign Minister Kimanya for an astute and exemplary leadership. And I'm convinced that the nation is also proud of you. Now what 
we have seen and done here today, we can agree that Ambassador Kumanya continues to don't state that something good will come out of NASA. The serious ladies and gentlemen, as I always inform the foreign minister, that I am one of the most no celebrity in our country. But for what I do, even my own countrymen criticize me. So I ask him to continue to build a team in the foreign ministry and do his work. Who knows what to require, not what to say. I remember when I was Senator of Mosulabu County, I hope I get this to remind it, just to prove who we are. Now what they say, or what they say we are. I call Madame Gray, as she can recall, I call to obtain a passport for my wife. And I did not know a position in the foreign ministry, maybe a deputy or a passport or something. I think she, she can explain. And she explained to me that, sir, I cannot give you a diplomatic passport. Only the President of the Republic of Africa can issue your wife a diplomatic passport. With the represent government, I think you can continue. I asked some police around me, and he was upset. The wife should say that you are the senator of the senator of Muslim County. She has the right to give you a diplomatic passport and your family. I said to them, she's doing her work. Now, she gave me an information. And I get the information. So what I did, I went through the process of taking the passport for my wife and for my children. It was a process before I became president. I did not get the passport before I became president. So I became president, I got the passport. <laughs> Now, the woman explained to me, and everybody said that she first came and, 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 and she had no respect. She had a job that had to replace her. And everybody gave me opinion that she, she, she must go. She had to be replaced. And we said to them, well, she was doing her job. And Madam Gray, I believe she obtained that job and she stayed on her job. <laughs> Somebody will say something. What I believe in, I believe in working and not listening. You know, so she stayed here, she stayed in the ministry. And God is here. I don't know when I keep the guy, I'm talking as if I did. God, the whole process here, gave the people your, your, your experience and stay with us. But these are the little party people. You know, but we are looking at them. You understand? Know, we have a very good relationship. So we did not come here to motivate the other people. We came here to employ the viewers. And that's why I'm not going to She's here yeah. to win. If yeah. the partner got say that what we are doing, she will not going to be here. Because she refused to give me a diplomatic passport for my wife.
the past chaos. And for us to be here today, it's because we are in peace. Let us continue with peace. And this country, to all of our experience in the world, we will be in opposition and somehow be in our family. But don't forget, we are the Americans first. And we must be in the country when we continue to move forward. So thank you so much. This is Spoon TV Live here at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs where President Weir is expected to cut the ribbon shortly of the building. So the president will cut the ribbon and the invocation has been done by the relation also to the president. Benediction has been done by the so the cutting of the ribbon has been done by President George Weah, along with Foreign Minister D. Matsuza Kimia. President George, we have flanked by Vice President Joel Howard Taylor, along with uh, Foreign Minister Dima Sosai Kimia and members of the Diplomatic Corps. 